Hi, I'm Oliver Bullough and I'm here to talk about my new book, Butler to the World, which describes how Britain went from being the biggest bully in the world to the butler to the biggest bully in the world. And I start the story right here in the city of London. Half a million people work here every day, but 70 years ago it wasn't like that at all. Hardly anyone was here. It was moribund, it was bomb damaged, it was dying. And the reason for that was, after World War II, governments put strict controls on the movement of money to prevent wealthy people being able to escape democratic scrutiny. They'd been very worried by fascism and wanted to make sure nothing like that could ever happen again. And that was kind of annoying for bankers and it was kind of annoying for their wealthy clients. So, in order to get around those controls, the bankers right here in London came up with a solution that didn't really make any sense. Now, in order to demonstrate that, I want you to imagine this bag of white powder is illegal. If I buy it with these nice pound notes, I will be committing a crime and I can be arrested. What the bankers discovered was that if instead of using pound notes to buy it, they use these nice green dollar bills, suddenly all the restrictions fell away and they could do whatever they liked. And the reason they could do whatever they liked is that these people behind me in the Bank of England, frankly, they let them. They didn't like the restrictions on money anyway. They wanted to get back in the money moving game. So they allowed the creation of this thing that the bankers called offshore. And it was huge. From the early 1960s, the market was about $5 billion a year. Right now, it's about $3 trillion a year. All money is offshore. Wealthy people asked Butler Britain to solve their problem for them. Butler Britain said, very good, sir, and solved it. But once you've solved one problem, there's often another one. So the second problem was, how could these wealthy people move the money without being noticed? How could they do it anonymously without scrutiny? Well, we're going to go to Harley Street now and we'll find out how Butler Britain sorted that problem for them. So here we are on Harley Street and our butler has a problem to solve. If you have a, pa a bag of, let's pretend this is an illegal substance and you don't want your fingerprints on it, what would a good butler advise? Well, he would advise that to avoid fingerprints, you wear a glove. And that's what this building is behind me, 29 Harley Street, the most notorious vendor of corporate gloves in London. Well, shell companies. This is where the company belonging to the former president of Ukraine was based. Uh, fraudsters, tax dodgers, you name it, they all had companies right here. In its pomp, there were 2, 000, more than 2,000 companies registered at 29 Harley Street. Sadly, now, as you can see, it's a building site, it's out of business. There are still weirdly 66 companies registered here. I think that's an oversight. But why has it been driven out of business? It certainly wasn't anything to do with a police operation or any kind of regulatory crackdown. It's because it got embarrassed by being exposed by journalists like me. Britain is a butler, remember, and there is absolutely no money in a butler shutting down the operations of their clients. And the, where we're going next, we're going to see quite how incoherent and fractured Britain's regulatory environment is and how easy, as a result, we make it for our wealthy and powerful clients to do whatever it is that they like. Very good, sir. So our, our client has conducted his illegal trade using dollars to be safe from the regulators. He's worn a glove to keep the fingerprints off. But what we really need to make sure is that no police agency is going to catch him. And that's why here in Butler, Britain, we don't have one super powerful police agency like they might have in the United States, for example. We have dozens of demoralised, under-resourced, outmatched agencies that really have got no idea how to even begin to tackle the wealthy and powerful people who are our clients. And that's why we've come here. This rather lovely building behind me is home to the faculty office of the Archbishop of Canterbury and in probably this is one of our two dozen anti-money laundering agencies. It is in charge of a branch of the legal profession, notaries, and has been since the 16th century because of the deal cooked up to allow Henry VIII to get a divorce. And it's pretty clear, if that's the basis on which we choose our money laundering agencies, that this isn't a task we're taking seriously. So if you want to get away with something, you come to Britain and we'll make sure that happens. And this is only a fraction of what we can do for you, I've explained today. Read the book, find out what Britain really does for its wealthy and powerful clients. We help them get away with absolutely anything.